Yes, sir. To receive the medallions on behalf of the Golden Jubilarians is Cavalier Edgar B. Aglipay, Cavalier Marciano A. Pinor Jr., Cavalier. Uniquely in face and the class colors is the class crest. Every class designates its own crest, which is of their own design. The crest embodies the symbolic ideals and character of the class. It is an arduous task to design the crest, as each cadet, represented by the crest, must live up to the essence embodied by each Magandang umaga po. United, we are strong. United, we will win. It is a joy seeing you all here saboring the chilly Baguio weather amidst the dreaded COVID-19 pandemic that has truly affected everything, including the conduct of our PMA alumni homecoming. Physically present or still celebrating with us virtually, sa inyong lahat ang aking taus-pusong pasasalamat at malugod na pagbati ng maligayang pagbalik Chief Justice Peralta is married to Court of Appeals Associate Justice Fernanda C. Lampas Peralta, a certified public accountant lawyer with whom he has four children, Attorney Dorothy, John Christopher, Timothy John, and John Isaac. Our keynote speaker, Honorable Josdado M. Peralta, to present the Cavalier Awards. Our guest of honor will be assisted by Cavalier Edgar B. Aglipay, the chairman, Philippine Military Academy Alumni Association Incorporated, and Cavalier Emmanuel B. Peralta, the President of the Philippine Military Academy Alumni Association Incorporated. Philippine Military Academy Alumni Association Incorporated, Count General Emilio Aguinaldo, Quezon City. The Cavalier Award is presented to Cavalier Delfin and Lorenzana, PMA Class of 1973, for outstanding performance in public administration. Cavalier Rolando de Bautista, PMA Class of 1985, for outstanding performance in public administration. Cavalier, Eduardo M. Año, PMA Class of 1983, for outstanding performance in public administration. The award will be received by Cavalier Florese of PMA Class 1983 in behalf of Cavalier Año. Cavalier, Ernesto C. Torres Jr., PMA Class of 1989, for outstanding performance in command and administration. Cavalier, Rolando C. Malinis, PMA Class of 1971, for outstanding performance in Special Fields Literature. The award will be received by Cavalier Balmaceda, PMA Class 1971, in behalf of Cavalier Malinis. Cavalier, Esmeraldo A. Romano, PMA Class of 1972, for outstanding performance in Special Fields. The award will be received by Cavalier Benaventura of PMA Class 1972 in behalf of Cavalier Romano. Yes, to receive the medallions on behalf of the Golden Jubilarians is Cavalier Edgar B. Aglipay, Cavalier Marciano A. Pinor Jr., Cavalier Ariston de los Reyes, and Cavalier Arturo Balmaceda. Also, joining us today from all over the Philippines, United States and Australia are the other members of our Golden Jubilarians, the PMA Matatag Class of 1971. Congratulations, sir, and you may now put on your medallions.
Please pause for a few seconds while our technical staff take a screenshot of our Golden Jubilarians. Of uh, the new honorary and associate members of TPM Triple AI, there are uh, ten of them, and three of them are uh, present this afternoon. May we call on the uh, those who are present this uh, afternoon? Secretary Roberto M. Pagdaganan, sir. General Mariano Mejia Risay, and Reverend Sin Hong Jun. The rest of the honorary and associate members are Benjamin De Leon, Reynaldo Odulio, Ernesto Villarreal, Alex De Quiroz, Colonel uh, William Yu, retired. And for associate members, we have Octavino Isguera and General Roberto Nuque, retired. May we request the chairman to give the, the uh, host. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I please state your name. Having been accepted as an uh, honorary member or associate member of the Philippine Military Academy Alumni Association Incorporated. Do hereby solemnly swear that I will abide by its constitution and bylaws, that I will support and uphold this code of ethics, that I will obey the rules and regulations promulgated by its board of directors, that I will observe the PMA's motto of courage, integrity, and loyalty, and that will impose this obligation upon myself, voluntarily without mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God, please sign your oath of membership. Congratulations and welcome to the PM People AI, our new associate and honorary members for this calendar year. As an honorary member and adopted cavalier of the of uh, PMAAAI, I have nothing but the highest regard to your prestigious organization. I want to convey my um, appreciation to Batch 1981 for initiating and sponsoring my adoption to this esteemed organization. As the saying goes, Tell me whom you associate with, and I will tell you who you are. With my Thus I feel honored and the Golden Jubilarian, the Matatags, represented here uh, by four classmates, the epitome of integrity and fighting for the allowances and pay, pay of the military and uniform personnel, Ariston de las Reyes. The guru of protocol in this country, Ambassador June Pinor. The host of all coverages going to Hawaii, Tex Balmaceda. I understand that our chief of staff was once uh, a, a, a guest of our uh, classmate, Tex Balmaceda, when he uh, was, uh, you know, a patient in this. In a hospital, in, and he, 
and our chief of staff is stating him, our classmate, as his second father. Thank you, Vista, for taking care of our chief of staff. <laughs> and we have only one honorary member. I hope our standards of accepting honorary member will be an example to the other classes. The former governor of Bulacan, many times member of cabinet, and now president of the Boy Scout of the Philippines, Obet Pagdanganan. The Philippine Military Academy has produced a number of distinguished alumni who eventually occupied high positions in the government and in the private sector. As such, it is indeed a privilege to be here among all of you this morning. Before me is an, uh, is an assembly of those distinguished alumni, individuals who embody the academy's core values of courage, loyalty, and integrity, the elite of the military. You are among more than 9,000 strong alumni of this institution, comprising active and retired members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, and the Philippine Coast Guard, among others. I consider it a distinct honor to be here today for several reasons. First, I have always held in high esteem graduates of the Philippine Military Academy. As a young boy growing up in Ilocos Norte, the image of PMA cadets and alumni I had in mind was that of a gallant uniformed personnel who upheld principle, honor, and duty individuals who have chosen the path of service to the people and to the country. In fact, that uh, you have given us uh, and that you will continue to give us uh, we we offer all of the things that we have done in this in the last 50 years to you and to your greater glory uh, and uh, as we gather to commemorate uh, 50 years uh, after our graduation and to allow us to reminisce uh, all of the days that we've gone through, all of the trials and tribulations, successes that we've undergone. Uh, please allow us to enjoy the, this evening, uh, O oh Lord. And, uh, Philippine Alumni Association Incorporated. Oh. <laughs> okay, let me read this uh, award for our classmates. Philippine Alu uh, PMA Alumni Association Incorporated. Cavalry Award 
is presented to Cabrera Rolando C. Marini 71 for outstanding performance in special field literature. Given this, uh, well, this is the 13th day of February 2021 at the Philippine Military Academy, Fort Ger General Gregorio del Pilar, Baguio City. Signed, Cavalier Edgar Aglify, PMA 71 Chairman and CEO of PMAAA. Cavalier Emmanuel Peralta, President and CEO of PMAAA. Cavalier Amado Cispino, Junior 72, Chairman, Awards Committee. Thanks so many people for the publication of the book. The Matatags and the Mas Matatags who contributed their own individual stories. Without their stories, the book will not exist. It is worth it to note that the foreign-based Matatags and the Mas Matatags were the first ones to support me financially through a pool pan the money, the money uh, was used to pay for the book editing. And also, I have to thank other Matatags who uh, contributed also for the publication and printing of the book. Thank you, Matatag and Mas Matatag. But foremost of all, I would like to thank my dear wife. <laughs> also to forgive my lapses as a father, grandfather, and husband. Sometimes I forgot to throw the trash cans, the trash, the garbage, <laughs> to wash the plate. And... There's a whole lot of things that you can improve on. And only you can tell yourself what these things are. But continuously improve yourself. Improve your knowledge by continuously reading, watching movies. Yeah, okay, watching Netflix, uh, learning lessons from these telenovelas. Mind you, I've watched a lot. And I have learned a lesson or two for every single, uh, what do you call this, uh, uh, series of these telenovelas, whether they're Korean, Japanese, Spanish, etc., etc. So you don't just watch, try to learn something. So always improve yourself. And finally, give something of yourself. Share. And sharing means not only giving, but talking to people, sharing your experiences, telling them of what you've done, telling them of what's inside your head. Because you may have all the knowledge in the world, but if you don't share it, it becomes a useless knowledge. And I'm reminded of uh, this morning, as I was talking to my little friend there, uh, Barry's uh, grandson, who, uh, after a while, I find out that there are beings where some are not like human beings and some are, you know, square, just like Lego. How would I have known all that if this uh, young man here did not share?
The Regimental Adjutant. This is about salutes and renders to the Regimental Commander that the Cadet Corps is for. To reflect on your past. For one, the path to success of PMA class 1971 was difficult. The road was led and the stories for the triumphs, defeats, struggles, rejections, joy, sacrifices, and disappointments. As Confucius says, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fall. To path to a successful career from 1971 to 1986 was on track. Growing along the traditional road, the military class evolved from young lieutenants fighting the CPP NBA Maoist insurgency to the MNLF rebellion to lieutenant colonels commanding battalions, provincial commands, and navy ships. At least 21 provisional metro district commands were headed by class members belonging to the Philippine Constabulary. 11 Army Infantry Battalions were under command of the Army Group. The Philippine Air Force Group commanded at least 8 squadrons, the equivalent of battalions in ground force. Almost all of the remaining Navy captains had commanded major naval sea craft, but the vessels destroyers and LSTs. To path the progressive military careers was assured as they were hailed heroes during the historic People Power Revolution of 1986. Ironically, the participation of some members of the class in the failed military coups in 1987 and 1989 against the person they put in power during the historic February 1986 revolution during their otherwise glorious military careers to uncertainty. The setback was temporary. Soon, those involved in coups were granted amnesty after Fidel V. Ramos became president in 1992. Ladies and gentlemen, trooping in line before you are the members of the PMP Manuka class of 1971, led by our guest of honor, Honorable Pankilo M. Lakso, Senator of Republic of the Philippines. They are accompanied by the Superintendent, Philippine Military Academy, Lieutenant General Ferdinand M. Gatuhano, Philippine Air Force, and with the Regimental Commander, Cadet First Captain, their Cadet the Volan CCAFP. The Cavalry Award, since its inception in 1962, is the highest recognition given to a PMA alumnus or alumna with outstanding achievements in their respective fields. He is awarded 18 times to outstanding members of the class, making Class 1971 a candidate for the PMA class with the most number of Cavalry Awards. For highly meritorious and valuable service, at least four motocops in the government service received high civilian honors awarded by no less than the President of the Philippines by the Secretary of National Defense on behalf of the President.
Most of them are the paths now, are the 71 and 72 range years of age. The path ahead is getting narrower and shorter as members of the class are diminishing. There are now just 60 living members out of the original 111 count. 25 to the grand beyond and 12 master tasks join or create for Seemingly, the road ahead for the few matatas, who are still occupying governing positions, is extended to allow them to display the usual inherent fashion in serving with the best interest of the country in mind. It is the class's hope that a distinguished member of class 1971 from the Senate will be elected to the country's top post as president in the coming national election in 2022. No, he may class 1971 isn't done yet. Excuse me. May you request everyone to rise for the honors to the nation. Thank you. You may now be seated. May we request the ladies of the members of the Bailey Matata class of 1971 to join their husbands for the awarding ceremony.
May we now request the ladies of the PMA Matata class of 1971 to award the golden medallions to their loved ones. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our Golden Jubilarians. And I was asked to introduce myself after hearing that I am from class 71. He patted in and said, oh, from the famous class of 1971. Imagine the, the Chief Justice excited to see a member of class 71. Maybe because of him. He's uh, the friend of the uh, senior. The question is, what has made the class of PMA 71 famous? It must be this notable class 71 accomplishments. Number one, some of our classmates led the reform armed forces of the Philippines movement that changed the course of history from martial law back to democratic way of government. Present here today who are leaders of this run is Twiki Subia and Kyodi Viduya. Palagpakan naman natin yung mga nista natin yan. Of course, she let's not forget Gringo. We are the only class in all learning institutions in our country that has two senators sitting at the same time in the halls of the Senate. I am referring to our guest of honor today, Bill Lapton and Greg Tunasa. From the records of the Cavalier Awards Committee, the PMA Class 71 tops the list or number of career awardees. I would like to mention, special mention for Dick De Leon, June Pinot, and again, our guest of honor, Ping Lakson. With this accomplishment, Class 71 has raised these standards for other classes to follow. Let me now go uh, to the other part, which is a sleep class of the PMA Alumni Association for the year 2020-2021, the following are our completions. We have started to build a PMA center in Bonifacio Global City. We will be out of Camp Aguinaldo soon in front of the new Philippine Senate and Supreme Court buildings along Lawton Avenue. 
On top of this project is in our classes, EQ Fernandez. EQ, mayo ka naman dyan. Sa yung nag-alis ng mga squatter doon, centuries na yata yung squatter doon. Ano kayo yung parang narabi. We organized and operationalized, operationalized the PMA Council of Presidents so that all the inputs of the Loma, alumni through their president shall be harnessed to manage our association. In addition to this, we have also organized the assembly of service academies in schools, alumni associations of the Philippines to bring together all sources of officers and military uniform service personnel for a united and coordinated better service to our country, especially during times of emergency. And Joy Lalisan has helped me organize this association. This is good for everybody. Work for the increase of pay of the military uniform personnel, so too with the pensioners. The author of this law is no other else than our guest of honor today. Of course, let's not forget yung makulit na classmate natin, yung pangalan niya, Alex de los Reyes, baka pag-iwita niya. And also, uh, uh, Greg Rasa. Sponsor. Sorry, sponsor. It seems that, uh, if you notice, pag mayroon ang accomplishment ng klase, mag-pop out yung pangalan ni Ping. Kaya, Mr. Hindi, ano to, talaga sila sabi ko lang yung totoo. So, palagpakan natin si Ping. Now, the other accomplishment of our class is solving the three greatest problems of the alumni association. We lost 42 million to the ACES investments. Well, during our time, we filed the case against the ACES Board of Directors. Aris de los Reyes helped me uh, in gathering the evidence against the members of the board of the ACES. Hindi ka kasi dumating dito, Aris, eh, kaya hindi mo na rinig ito. Number two, we have duplicating organizations in the foundation. And when we visited Pink, sabi niya, gawin natin ng uh, palitin natin yan, limang organisasyon natin. That will serve the members of the PMA and the PMA Foundation. We have decreased that into two. The PMA Alumni Association who will serve the members and the PMA Foundation who will serve PMA. Say to it that we provide better education and facilities to the cadets. This is our way of saying thank you to the cadets today. Thank you, First Captain Kabbalah and the cadets. Let's give a big hand to the cadets. Problem number three, the improper investment of our association fund. Before, the funds were invested through uh, the accounts of members. Today, corporate funds is inv invested in a PMA corporate account, properly counted, invested in money. ARIS is consistently following up the set investment plan. Raising the bar on how high the PMA, a pay, a PMA class can accomplish and passing a brighter torch to the incoming class did not end the work of Class 71 for the future. The class of 1971, through its members, has put into place the PMA Alumni Association Incorporated five-year plan, the path 
of our organization for a brighter future. With all this accomplishment, the PMA class says to our Lord and Creator, we did it for you, greater glory, Lord. To our dear PMA, Thank you for holding us. And to the incoming PMA lead classes, our best wishes for a brighter future for us all. To all of you who made this accomplishment a reality, The class of Batatar. A warm welcome and a resounding round of applause to our very own proud son of our alma mater, the Honorable Senator Panpilo P. Morena. To the members of the Batatar class of 1971, of course, the better halves present here this morning, aka Mas Batatars. Sila kasi yung holders ng uh, Power of the Cars. The members of the Cadet Corps, Armed Forces of the Philippines, are our guests, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. In the spirit of uh, that age-old tradition, military tradition of Esprit de Corps, let us forget for a while that I am a third term Senator of the Republic. Let's forget for a while that I am a presidential aspirant in the May 2022 election. So let's have some fun. Let's relax. Speaking of our forgetfulness, in recent decades, scientists have been putting forward the radical idea that the human brain is designed to forget that all unused memories wither over time, like a photograph left under the sunlight. Getting old really sucks. Almost nothing is left in your brain except happy, pleasant, even naughty memories that you cannot even remember. The worst. Hindi pala, hindi pa yun ang worst. Imagine if uh, retired Major General Ray Rivera, member of Alpha Company, faces uh, now MTO Director Edgar Galvante and start suckling him being our uh, company commander and our yearling when we were pleased. But that's not the worst yet. And worse if uh, MTO Director or former cadet Edgar Galvante starts chilling and raising up. Yun talaga yung uh, ultimate forgetfulness. But don't get me wrong. The surviving members of this class of this year's Golden Jubilarians, the Matatag class of 1971, are not there yet. But when the inevitable happens to many of us, maybe 10 to 20 years from now or earlier, I am quite certain that my brain would designate a special compartment that houses the good, the bad, the ugly, and even the painful memories inside the resounding halls of our cadet barracks, the cadet mess hall, and everywhere else within the confines of Port de Pilar. Five decades and four years ago, on our reception day, April 1, 1967 to be exact, Faith brought together 148 young men to this hallowed grounds up in the misty mountains of pines and evergreens. Strip of civilian antics, our plebhood instantly subjected us to tough training, unique rules and regulations, and the highest norms of conduct that nobody but us would comprehend. Being the lowest life form in the cadet corps, a plebe's single goal only mattered to learn to be obedient followers so they can be fit and prepared to become field commanders and leaders of men that are apart from and above the rest. 
Are these as yearlings, cows, and firsties for their sheep and hold us to the principles of honor, discipline, and excellence to stand against anything that threatens our country's march toward the path of security and progress. On March 28, 1971, 109 men, all imbued with the values of courage, integrity, and loyalty, were supposed to step out from the gate of Porter Pilar. Sadly, one of those young men, the late first class cadet Wilfredo Tapia, succumbed to leukemia, thus posthumously graduated with the rest of us. From then on, the rest is history. For the Matatag class of 1971, it was 50 years of glory, service, triumphs, defeats, and sacrifices. Our class members were called different names, some good, some bad, sometimes even vitriolic and vicious, which I had actually experienced as we belong to arguably thus far the most controversial Hindi people, most controversial class to emerge from the academy since its founding in the early 20th century. But one thing is certain, we are never called the Matatags for no reason. Living after our class moniker, our class fought and bled in many battles. We stood at the forefront of armed rebellions and peaceful revolutions that set the course of our nation's history. Even in our second careers as elected or appointed public officials as well as in private enterprises, within us is our ironclad commitment to the virtues taught to us by our beloved alma mater. These virtues are much warranted in today's unprecedented challenges. The long-term impact of the pandemic, the ballooning national debt, the biggest dip of our economy, the maritime disputes in the West Philippine Sea as well as the undeniable climate crisis. At this very moment, I ask of you a few seconds of silence for all our countrymen who, as we speak, have been suffering from the devastating impact of Typhoon Odette. The world indeed shifts under our feet and nothing but change has remained constant. Looking back, much has changed in the landscape of the Philippine Military Academy in over five decades. The prospect of the country's first National Cyber Defense Academy, along with the largest intelligent network through Project Lightning in Baguio City, were unimaginable back in our day. Between you and me, what we can now anticipate appears to be a digital renaissance in the next three years. This breakthrough in digital uh, technology is our way to revolutionize our connectivity landscape, which already addresses the speed, cost, and efficiency requirements to literally connect everything. Yesterday, I had a chance to see for myself Baguio, Baguio's Smart City Command Center, the realization of Mayor Benjamin Magalong's vision of operationalizing digital governance in order to unlock even more socio-economic opportunities in the city. The innovative solutions in crowd density monitoring, timely incident reporting, and even real-time weather prediction will surely be key in elevating the quality of life of the city's residents. Indeed, we, what we are bound to do as leaders in various sectors of our country is to stay the course and keep in pace with the pivotal transformations in our society, akin to that of the meaningful governance reforms of Baguio City Mayor and fellow Cavalier Benji Magalo. This includes facing ourselves to the thriving digital economy that is bound to change not only our defense system, but literally every 
single aspect of our nation's well-being. Only if we institute the much-needed reforms of our society in line with the demands of our time can we live up to the legacy of being matatag, strong, unbowed, and unyielding. We are the keepers of this legacy. Let it be said by future generations of soldiers like you that in times of the country's political turmoil, never did we sit idly nor wallow. In times when we were called to be of service to our fellow men, never did we turn our backs. Instead, we wore our badges with honor and dignity. In the face of the challenges that confronted our country, we carried with us the highest ideals of nationalism and patriotism in the performance of our noble duty. Not for anyone, but for the Filipino people. As the long gray line keeps getting longer, we remain unbowed in carrying our proud heritage of our esprit de corps as cavaliers. We keep history alive as we gather here today on the iconic Borromeo Field. And to this end, let the words of our Academy song enliven the memories of the 108 strong group of men who have offered their best share of illustrious service to the country and the Filipino people. Let thy sons ever be men of integrity, courage, and loyalty. Academy of Hail to thee. Maraming salamat and enjoy your break starting tomorrow. Salamat po. Maraming salamat sa atin. No. Uh -huh.